Wake up everyone, a new Windows feature update just dropped and technically, even though this has a ton of new features, it technically is not the 23H2 update that still is to come. This one is being called the Moment 4 update. So of course, I'm gonna go over a lot of the big features and then even some of the smaller ones that I think are still pretty cool. And I will note that this won't install automatically to get it, what you do is go into Windows Update and then either enable the get the latest updates as soon as they're available option, or you might just see this thing for 2023-09 cumulative update preview and download and install that, and that should give it to you. I will put links in the description to Microsoft blog posts where they go into detail about all the new changes and features, because I'm not gonna cover every single little thing. Some of them I don't think are important, but it might be to you. So we can start off with the feature that is being promoted the most by Microsoft, and that is the Copilot preview. So that's the AI thing. Basically it's Bing chat where right now you'll see a new icon show up in the taskbar. You can turn it off, but when you click it, you'll see the same thing that you would on the Bing chat website. So you can ask it stuff. It uses GPT-4 on the back end, And also it can do some basic stuff like changing to dark mode if you ask it to, but that's not really any more convenient than just searching the settings for it. Also, it can apparently integrate into some apps like Outlook to help with summarizing emails and stuff, although I haven't really tried that out. Fortunately, it's a bit more than just a wrapper for the Bing chat website. It does integrate a little bit. For example, if you use the snipping tool while the thing is open, it will automatically catch that from the clipboard and ask if you want to send it and analyze it and see what's in there, for example. So it's kind of cool. You can analyze images and stuff. Now, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on that feature, Personally, I don't find it very useful or at least any more useful than just using the Bing chat. So you can read more about it if you want. I'm sure they're gonna be adding stuff to it. Now, the next new feature is one that a lot of people have been waiting for, and that is native support for all sorts of file archives, not just zip files. It now supports all these, such as seven zip files, RAR files, tar gz tarball files and you can see here if there is for example a tar.gz file it can extract just fine though there are a couple things i want to note first of all the first time you go to open it you might have to select to use file explorer to open it it apparently doesn't set that by default and also it seems like unlike zip files you have to actually extract the files first to open them if you click into it you can see what files are in there but for example if i try to open this image while in this it just says corrupt until I actually extract it. Next up, we have a new feature for Notepad, which is now, even if you close it, it will still keep your session open. So if you have a bunch of note tabs open, you close it, it will reopen them when you open the Notepad back up. So this is really useful if you don't really necessarily want to save a bunch of note text files, but you still wanna take some notes on something, it's a little bit safer to do so in Notepad. Also, there's some major new features in the Paint app, and that is that it supports transparency and it has layers now. You can see how I open up the image and then I can create a new layer on top of it, scribble on it, and then hide that if I want so it doesn't mess with the base image. Paint even also has a new feature to automatically remove the background of an image, again using AI, and I found it to be pretty decent for what it is. It wasn't like super amazing quality. For example, I tried to remove the background of this emoji and it did leave kind of a white halo around it, so it doesn't seem to be perfect, but probably for a lot of people, decent enough. Apparently this version is not rolling out to everyone at the same time for some reason, but hopefully it will to everyone soon. You can check if you have it by going into the Microsoft Store and then clicking Get Updates to make sure that at least downloads the last one that you have. Also, those signed up for the Windows Insider program will also get a new version of Paint that has something called Co-Creator, which will allow it to AI generate images that you type in. So that's really cool. It basically uses the Bing image generator, but yeah, Paint is getting an upgrade, but not to be outdone by the snipping tool, which is also getting some new features. Now, if you take a screenshot that has text in it, you can press this text actions button and it will use optical character recognition and I think some AI to analyze the text and let you select it with a cursor and then you can copy it from there or you can hit copy all text. And you can also use this quick redact button to automatically cover up any phone numbers and email addresses, either of them. So this is a really cool way to natively in Windows get text 
from an image. Also in the update blog, it mentioned that you're supposed to be able to now record your microphone with the video screen recording mode and snipping tool. I didn't have that. So again, it's an annoying thing where they say, hey, you can do this now, and then you actually can't. And I believe this is actually the same thing for this text analysis tool. You might not be able to get it right away, but at least you can check by again, going into the Microsoft store and hitting get updates and see if it gives you the latest one. Moving on, there's a new feature in the Photos app. If you go into the edit mode for an image, you can now click to blur the background. Again, it uses AI to analyze it then gives you a preview where you can adjust the blur intensity and it even lets you use a brush tool to add or remove parts that will be blurred and for the most part it got the main subject right this was a tough one because some stuff is actually in front of him and the background was already kind of blurred but at least it got the edges of him and the main book right the file explorer has also gotten some updates they say it's been modernized one new thing you'll notice is the gallery option which I think pretty much just shows recent photos and stuff similar to what the photos app is going to do. But one cool new little thing is you can finally now drag tabs from one file explorer window onto another. I guess you couldn't do that before, but now you can. Also, there's an option for a new details pane that will show up when you select a file before it was just the preview pane, but now you can have it show more info, not just the image or whatever. Next up, there is a new Windows backup app that seems to be just for if you're like moving to a new PC or something. I don't think this is for like a full backup of your computer. It says it backs up your files and apps and stuff, but from my understanding what I was reading, it doesn't actually back up the files of the app, like the installation itself. It backs up a list of what programs you have installed and then the settings along with them and then just re-downloads them on a new computer and restores the settings. So if that's the case, I would have to guess that that only works with Microsoft Store apps, although I'm not sure. But strangely, it really doesn't tell you exactly what it's backing up, which I didn't like. And I have to assume that for the files and folders, it's just backing up the library things like you can already do with OneDrive. So to be honest, I would not trust this thing if I was wiping a computer and restoring it. Though if I was just moving to a secondary computer, it's probably fine for just getting your stuff over there. But again, it doesn't tell you exactly what it's backing up. So I'm not a fan of that. Moving on, the narrator feature now has more natural voices. So now if you go and search for the narrator feature, it will probably show you this thing and give you the option to download these new voices, and then you'll have the option to use them. And they do sound a lot better. They are the AI neural voices, I guess, so they're more natural. They're not just like robot voices so much. Next up, there's some new features in the volume mixer. So if you go to the system tray, click that, and then click this thing. Now it'll show you all the sound devices. And if you scroll down to the bottom, it shows any currently running running programs that have sound playing and you can individually adjust the volume of all those. There's also a option to enable spatial audio for Windows, which I think is some kind of like virtual surround sound if you have headphones. I probably wouldn't turn this on unless you're like watching a movie or something because again, it might manipulate how the audio sounds, but still kind of cool that you can relatively easily find that if you didn't even know that was a feature before. Moving on, another cool little feature is auto dimming. If you have a device that has a presence sensor, so this is probably gonna be either a tablet or a laptop. So if you walk away, it will apparently automatically dim your screen. And when you come back, bring it back up to save energy. And also Microsoft is releasing a new program, Outlook for Windows, which is free. And it seems to be kind of like a replacement for the Windows Mail app and sort of like the Microsoft 365 full-blown Outlook. So I don't know if it has all those features, but it's free at least, so it gets you closer to that. So now let's move on and talk about some new settings options. Some of these are really cool. First of all, when you go into the settings, you'll notice that there is a new look to it. It shows some recent and suggested settings. It'll show you personalization, that kind of thing. But one really new cool setting is the option to add the end task button when you right click a program on the taskbar. And to do this, you go into settings and then system and then for developers and then enable end task. Just be careful when you use this because it doesn't seem to give any kind of confirmation. So unlike if you just close a program and you were working on something, it will remind you, hey, do you wanna save this before you close it? If you just hit the end task button, you're not gonna have an option to do that. So just be aware of that. There's also a new menu for pass keys, which is basically a replacement for passwords. I made a whole video about this talking about how to set it up with Google. I'll have that pop out. 
but now you can go into the settings and see which pass keys you have saved in Windows Hello. You can remove them, so that's just convenient. Also, I'll point out, don't mix pass keys up with the security keys, the physical things. They're completely different, so just don't mix those up. Next up, a really cool feature that a lot of people have been waiting for is dynamic lighting, which now lets you natively support RGB lighting for your computer. You can find this under personalization. You can see options like setting it to your Windows accent color. You can change it manually to be solid or a breathing effect, that sort of thing. Now, right now, I can't really test this out because I don't have any devices that support it through this. They're adding more support for a lot of devices like apparently Logitech and most of theirs will support it. And they do show that a lot of companies are partnering with them to ensure that most devices probably eventually will support this. So fortunately, you won't have to use the often extremely bloated software that comes with a lot of devices just to control the colors. A little bit more customization options for taskbar. Now you have the option to not show the date and time in the date and time settings if you don't want that showing. Also, you can now choose to have it never combine objects in the taskbar, so it'll always show each window as a separate thing. You can find that under taskbar behavior settings, and then the option combine taskbar buttons and hide labels to never, and then it'll look like this. And also you can set that separately for secondary monitors if you want. And also a little change is now notifications will show as a bell that's filled in in the taskbar bottom right, and if it's no notifications, it'll just show as an outline. A couple other random new little changes. First of all, the new update now uses the fluent emojis that Microsoft has, so they're kind of like 3D looking, they're kind of cool. And also, you can now go into the apps list and uninstall Cortana if you've been waiting to do that more easily. Finally, there's a few business-oriented features that I can mention. You can now set it so Windows can log in to a business account with no passwords at all. So using Windows Hello, using some method or another. Another feature, now if you have employees using a cloud Windows PC, you can now have it boot directly into that using the Windows 365 PC thing. And also if you're now using a cloud PC, you can basically use the same way to switch between that, like you will a virtual desktop, so it's a bit more seamless. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Again, this is not even a 23H2 update. I don't know how many features are gonna be added into that one. If there's a significant amount, again, I'll make a video about it, so be sure to subscribe for that. If you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments what is your favorite new feature, and if I missed any, be sure to let me know down there too. And of course, if you liked the video, again, be sure to like it. It always helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I talk about all the new tools in Microsoft Power Toys, which is like a suite of really cool tools that you can download from Microsoft and all the new features that they added for that one recently. So I'll put that link right there. You can just click on that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.